This is going to be another question and answer video. And this question was from a young female Christian about should she get married? And I think the quick answer to that is if you desire a husband, if you're a woman, then you should get married. If you're a man, if you desire a wife, then you should get married. But 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 2 says, Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So the primary reason of getting married is to avoid fornication. I know that doesn't sound all that romantic, but that's what it is. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, let every woman have her own husband. The greatest help to getting rid of sexual sin is marrying another Christian. That won't completely eliminate sexual sin. It's still, you know, you still have a free will to commit those sins, but that's going to eliminate a lot of it. It says in verse 3 in 1 Corinthians 7, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission, and not of commandment. For I would that all men were, even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God." One after this manner and another after that. So when he says, For I would that all men were even as I myself, he is meaning not married. Paul had a gift. He didn't have to have a wife. He could serve God without a wife and without living in a constant state of lust. 1 Corinthians 7, 8 says, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. That is, unmarried. However, he says in the next verse, verse 9, But... If they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. I believe that is your answer. That is, burning their lust. So if you can't live an unmarried Christian life without burning in your lust, then you should seek a Christian partner. And that's a normal thing. I believe that's most people's situation. Why does Paul desire a person to stay unmarried if they can? If you can stay unmarried and not live in lust, then you should just go ahead and stay unmarried. But if any part of you desires to be married, then I would go ahead and be married. But he says in 1 Corinthians seven thirty-two and 33, But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So someone who can live a Christian life unmarried without burning in their lust has more time to serve the Lord. However, I've not, any, I've not met anyone personally that I can think of that has this same gift as Paul to where they can live an unmarried Christian life and not live in lust. So I believe if you desire a husband, then you should get married. That's my answer. But Paul is definitely for marriage. Uh, a lot of people think by this he's, just, he's talking against marriage, but he's not uh, talking against marriage at all. And it even says those who teach that you shouldn't get married are actually teaching doctrines of devils. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed, seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. See, that's one of those doctrines of devils is forbidding to marry. There are a lot of young Christian men who can't find a good Christian wife because it's, it's very rare to find one. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Proverbs 31.10, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 12.4, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, and she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness to his, in his bones. It's a great thing for a godly woman to marry a good Christian man to be a helpmeet for him. The Lord himself said in Genesis 2.18, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an helpmeet for him. 
So the Lord is for you being a good Christian woman. And if you desire a husband, marry a good Christian man and be a helpmeet to him. In Proverbs 19.14 it says, A prudent wife is from the Lord. One of the greatest things a man can have is a good wife. And I'd say that the rewards a woman would get for being a good wife will be as much if not more than any great man who ever teached or preached the Bible. In Ephesians 5, 22 and 25, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the save, Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. God certainly honors a godly marriage that follows those instructions and he even says in Hebrews 13, 4, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So what should this young woman look for in a husband? She should look for a man who is not only a Christian, but lives Christ-like. A man who is not only a Christian, but lives in the words of God. Many people, in haste to get married will end up marrying a lost person or a worldly Christian, and it makes for a very hard marriage. In my opinion, it is much easier for a woman to find a mate than it is for a man to find one. I've received a lot more questions from men asking how they can find a godly wife than I have the other way around. So I don't believe this woman would have a hard time finding a man who wants a good Christian wife. I just wouldn't settle for a lost person, and I wouldn't settle for a worldly Christian man. Now, she could just as easily, if not more easily, serve God without a husband. Nothing says you have to get married. In 1 Corinthians 7, 34, it says, There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So Paul admits it would be easier for her to serve without a husband. But I believe if she has any desire at all for a husband, then she should, be, she should get married. She'd be better off married. Not everyone has the gift that Paul had. I'd say most people don't have it. I've never met anyone that had this gift. So I think if she desires a husband, then she should get married. Desires a husband for any reason whatsoever, then she should get married. Nothing says you have to get married. It even says it's easier to give all your time to the Lord if you're not married. So the Lord has given you liberty on that based on do you desire one or you don't desire one. That's my answer to this question. And uh, another question she had was, should she just wait? Well, you should wait as long as it takes to find a good husband. Like if you, tomorrow you met someone that would be a good husband, you know, you don't have to wait that much longer. You know, you, you know, I, I recommend, you know, dating that person just for a little while to make sure he is who he says he is. But I don't believe you have to be engaged for 10 years like some people do. You know, I'm for, you know, if you find a good person that's a good Christian, you should get married to that person quickly as possible because you know in the times that we're living in you know the, the world just wants to make you lust and the cure for sexual sin is getting married now it's still up to you after you get married you're still going to struggle with sexual sin but you have to fight that temptation you have to fight these temptations especially for men in 2020 all your sin on everywhere is half naked women everywhere it's a battle with your mind so you the uh, the way the cure for sexual sin is to get married that's why paul said nevertheless to avoid fornication so that's my answer to this question is if you desire a husband you should get married if you feel like you can go without a husband and that you don't need one, then you can serve the Lord even easier without one. Don't feel like you have to have one to serve the Lord. And don't feel like you don't have to have one to serve the Lord. 
because there's people that feel both ways. But both ways are true. Neither one of those ways are necessarily true. You may have the gift that Paul had where you don't have to get married. You may not have the gift. If you don't have the gift, I believe that you should be married. 